In section 3.1, we introduce a very special type of function called quadratic functions. Now, a quadratic function is nothing more than a polynomial function of degree 2. So the general form of a quadratic function is f of x equals ax to the second power plus bx plus c. And so the reason we say this is a second degree polynomial function is because the highest power of x is the second power. And for quadratic functions, we make the assumption that a, this leading coefficient here, is not 0. And the reason for that is because if a were 0, then this would simply be a linear function. So now we'll talk about the standard form of a quadratic function. Any quadratic function can be expressed in what we call standard form. So instead of writing it in this sort of general format, we can write it as a times the quantity x minus h to the second power plus k. And when it's written in this form, you can get some very valuable information from the equation. So it turns out the graph of a quadratic function is a parabola and parabolas have something called a vertex, which is this point right here on the graph. And this parabola will open upward if this value of a is positive, and it will open downward if the value of a here is negative. And here you have a couple of general illustrations of what that parabola would look like if it opens up, and also what the parabola looks like if it opens down. Now, in addition to that, we can also talk about the maximum or minimum value of a quadratic function. So because the graph of a quadratic is a parabola, all parabolas that open upward will have a minimum value at the vertex, and all parabolas that open downward will have a maximum value at the vertex. And the other thing to note in regard to the equation and the graph is that the coordinates of the vertex are assumed to be h and k, and those values are found here in the equation. So let's just consider a very brief, simple example. So here we have the equation f of x equals negative 2 times the quantity x minus 3 to the second power plus 5. So this quadratic function has the standard form that we talked about up here. And from this, we can readily identify the vertex of the parabola. Now, the vertex of the parabola has coordinates h and k. And the h value is the opposite of the value that you see here in parentheses. That's actually what the negative sign means here. So the vertex is going to have an x-coordinate of positive 3. And the y-coordinate is the k value here. And since that has a plus sign, what that means is that the y-coordinate of the vertex is the value that you see here. So we take the opposite of this number and we leave this number alone. And so that gives us a vertex of 3, 5. Now, the value of a in this case is negative 2. And since a is equal to negative 2, that is less than 0. And so this parabola opens down. And because it opens down, we will have a maximum value occurring at the vertex, like was suggested over here. So in a parabola that opens downward, the maximum value there is the k value, so it is the y-coordinate of the vertex. So we're going to say maximum value is 5, which occurs at x equals 3. Okay, So the maximum value is 5. That's the highest value on the parabola. That's the highest y value. And that occurs at x equals 3. And finally, we'll just bring in a graph to show what this looks like. So here you see the parabola, which opens downward. And you can see the vertex occurs at the point 3, 5. And so this value of y here on the y-axis of 5, this is the maximum value of the function. 
because there is no other point on the function higher than 5. And that occurs at x equals 3. Now, how do you graph a parabola? Well, these are things that you actually do in intermediate algebra. But basically, you can just make a table of values, and you can get points. So for example, for this one here, we would simply make a t-chart. And since we know the vertex occurs at x equals 3, and the y-coordinate is 5, I'll put that point in the middle. And then I'm just going to pick two x values to the left of x equals 3, and two x values to the right of x equals 3. And then we would just plug those in to get the corresponding y values. So I'll spare you of the work, but basically you're just going to take these numbers and substitute them into the function. When you plug in 2, you would find that you get 3. And when you plug in 4, you also find that you get 3. And when you plug in 5, you would get... Uh, <clears throat> negative 3, and when you plug in 1, you also get negative 3. And you can see those points on the graph. Here's the vertex, here's the point 2, 3, here's the point 4, 3, and then we have the point 1, negative 3, and 5, negative 3. And that five-point summary is a good way to graph quadratic functions. Next, I want to consider a quadratic function that is given in the general form. So here we have f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 8x plus 5. And I'd like to do the same thing. So I would like to find the vertex. I'd like to know if it opens up or down. I'd like to know if it has a maximum or minimum value, and I'd also like to see the graph. Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to transform the function f of x into the standard form, which looks like this. So what we need to do here is we need to complete the square. So we're going to start with our original function f of x here. And I'm going to sort of review the completing the square process, which is something that all of you should have seen prior to this course. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out the leading coefficient, which is the 2 right there. And I'm only going to factor it out of the first two terms. So I'm going to pull a 2 out of 2x squared, which gives us x squared. And I'm also going to pull a 2 out of negative 8x, which gives us negative 4x. The positive 5 here, I'm going to leave that on the outside of the parentheses. And the reason for this is because we need to complete the square right here. Now, to complete the square, there are two things that you have to be sure of. One is you have to have a 1 in front of your x squared, and that is exactly why we factor out the 2 here. But the other thing is, to actually get the number, you have to take the middle number, which is negative 4. You have to divide that by 2, and you have to square that result. And when you do that, you get the number positive 4. And that's the number that I'm going to add right here to complete the square. Now on the outside, I need to compensate for what I've added there. Now, conventional wisdom would tell you that if you add 4, you would have to subtract 4 to cancel that out. But you need to remember that this 4 is inside the parentheses, and everything inside the parentheses is multiplied by 2. So 2 multiplied by 4 is actually positive 8. So if I want to counteract that, I have to subtract 8 to cancel that out. Okay, so once we've done that, we can now rewrite our function f of x we can say that it is 2 multiplied by, and this quadratic in here, x squared minus 4x plus 4, factors now into a perfect square. It's x minus 2 times x minus 2, which we can write as x minus 2 quantity squared, and then minus 3. And so now we have what we need to identify all the things we listed up above here. So now we can easily see that the vertex of this parabola 
is positive 2, negative 3. We know that it opens up since a is equal to 2, which is positive, right? The value of a is here. Since it opens up, we know it's going to have a minimum value. And the minimum value is the y-coordinate of the vertex, which is negative 3. And that minimum value occurs at x equals 2. And then to graph this, we just need to get some points. And here are some points. So once again, notice that I put the vertex, 2, negative 3, in the middle of my t table. And then I pick two x values less than 2. So I pick 1 and 0. And I pick two x values greater than 2. So I pick 3 and 4. And I plug those into the function to find the corresponding y values. And here is the graph. And you can verify all the information that we have there. We have a vertex of 2, negative 3. We have a parabola that opens up. We can see the lowest value on the curve is at y equals negative 3, and that occurs at x equals 2. Let's do the same thing again, but we'll try the function f of x equals negative 3x squared plus 9x minus 5. So what I'm going to do is complete the square to put it into the standard form. So we're going to convert this to f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And to do this, we'll go through the same steps. So first thing I'm going to do is factor out the value of a, which is negative 3. And I'm going to pull that out of the first two terms. So when I pull negative 3 out of here, we're left with x squared. And when you pull negative 3 out of positive 9x, you're left with negative 3x. And then we'll leave room to complete the square. And the minus 5 goes on the outside. So this just comes down here. Now, when you complete the square, you have to take the middle number, which is negative 3. You have to divide that by 2, and you have to square it. And this number is 9 fourths. And that's the number that I have to add inside the parentheses to complete the square. Now, on the outside of the parentheses, we need to compensate for what we added here. But actually, we didn't add 9 fourths we actually added 9 fourths multiplied by negative 3. And so if you do the math on that, negative 3 times 9 fourths is negative 27 over 4. So to compensate for that on the outside of the parentheses, I have to add 27 over 4. So now once we've done those steps, we can rewrite this into the vertex form or the standard form. So we have negative 3, and then this here gets factored. Let's talk about that briefly. x squared minus 3x plus 9 fourths factors as x plus, excuse me, not plus, x minus 3 halves times x minus 3 halves. And you can verify that. 3 halves times 3 halves is 9 fourths, and negative 3 halves plus negative 3 halves is negative 3. So when you factor that, you actually end up with x minus 3 halves quantity to the second power. And that's what goes here. And then on the outside, we have negative 5 plus 27 over 4. Well, negative 5 is negative 20 over 4 plus 27 over 4 is equal to 7 over 4. So that simplifies to positive 7 over 4. And so the vertex for this parabola is going to be at positive 3 halves, 7 over 4. It is going to open down, which means it will have a maximum value equal to the y-coordinate of the vertex, which is 7 fourths, and that occurs at x equals positive 3 halves. And we'll just throw in a graph here, just for good measure. And here is a quick graph. So we can see that the vertex occurs at x equals 1.5, which is the same as 3 halves, and positive 1.75, which is the same as 7 fourths. You can see that it opens downward, and it also has a maximum value of 
1.75 or 7 over 4. Now, what we should take away from the last example is the fact that completing the square can be a very tedious process involving lots of tedious factoring and tedious arithmetic. There is another way to find the maximum or minimum value of a quadratic function, or that is to say, there is another way to find the vertex. So to find the vertex, what we do is we use the formula. And the formula is that if you have some function in general form, ax squared plus bx plus c, the maximum or minimum value, or the vertex, is going to occur at x equals negative b divided by 2a. And then you can find that minimum or maximum value by simply plugging in the x-coordinate of the vertex into the function. So to illustrate this, we'll use this formula on the problem that we did previously. So we had f of x equals negative 3x squared plus 9x minus 5. And I would like to find the vertex. So the formula says x is going to be equal to negative b divided by 2a. And in this case, b is 9 and a is negative 3. So this is negative 9 divided by 2 times negative 3, which is negative 9 divided by negative 6. And you can cancel the negatives and reduce the fraction to get 3 over 2. So the x-coordinate of the vertex occurs at 3 over 2. Now the y-coordinate of the vertex occurs at the function value at x equals 3 over 2. So to get this, I only need to plug 3 over 2 into the function. And so we can do that work here. And if we simplify this, we have negative 3 times 9 fourths plus 9 times 3 halves is 27 divided by 2 minus 5. Multiplying this out, we have negative 27 over 4 plus 27 over 2 minus 5. And then when you add the fractions negative 27 over 4 plus 27 over 2, you get positive 27 over 4 and then minus 5. And when you do the math here, you end up getting 7 over 4. And so we can see that the vertex has an x value of positive 3 halves and a y value of 7 over 4. And you'll notice that this is the same answer that we got from completing the square in the last problem. So the formula is clearly an easier way to find the vertex of a parabola and also the maximum or minimum. But it is still very important that you understand how to complete the square. Let's take a look at an application problem. So here it says, most cars get their best gas mileage when traveling at a relatively modest speed. The gas mileage M for a certain new car is modeled by the function M of S equals negative 1 over 28 times S squared plus 3s minus 31. And this is valid for s between the values of 15 and 70, where s is the speed in miles per hour and m is measured in miles per gallon. What is the car's best gas mileage? So what they're asking is, what is the maximum gas mileage so what they're asking for is the maximum value of M in this problem now again we have M as a function of s is equal to negative 1 over 28 s squared plus 3 s minus 31 if you want to find the maximum or the minimum value of a quadratic function, you need the vertex. And the vertex of this is going to occur at s equals negative b divided by 2a. Now I say s equals because the independent variable is s. Normally it's x, but in this case they use s to represent the speed of the car. 
So to compute this, we're going to take negative 3, right, because b is equal to 3, and we're going to divide that by 2 times a, and a is negative 1 over 28. And so we'll do the math here. First of all, the negatives cancel out. And what we have is 3 divided by, and then 2 over 28, those cancel out, leaving you with a 14 here. And so we have 3 divided by 1 14th, which is 3 times 14, which is 42. And this is miles per hour because this is the speed. So 42 miles per hour is how fast you would have to drive if you want to get the maximum gas mileage. But notice that the question wasn't how fast are, do you have to drive. The question, the first question is, what is the car's best gas mileage? And then they say, at what speed is it attained? So we answered the second part of the question, but we still didn't answer the first part of the question. So what we have to do is take this value of s, and we have to plug it into the function. So we need to do m of 42 which is negative 1 over 28 times 42 squared plus 3 times 42 minus 31. And for things like this, you can certainly use a calculator to help you figure out um, you know, these larger numbers. So what we have is negative 1 over 28 times 42 squared is 1,764 plus, and then 3 times 48 is 126 minus 31, and then we'll continue on here. So we'll take 128, and we'll multiply that by 1764, which gives us 63. And so that needs to be negative 63 plus 126 minus 31. And this is the same as 126 minus 94. And if you do the math on that, this is 32 and remember, this is miles per gallon. So if you drive at a speed of 42 miles per hour, you will get the maximum gas mileage for the car, which is 32 miles per gallon. And we'll bring in a quick graph here. And the graph illustrates that, you know, down here you have your S-axis representing speed. And on your y-axis, you have mileage. And you can see that in the beginning, the faster that you drive, the more mileage you get. But if you drive too fast, you burn too much fuel and your mileage begins to go down. And so the maximum mileage occurs at a speed of 42. And the mileage that you get here is 32 miles per gallon. For our final example, we have the following situation. We want to put fencing around a horse corral. Carol has 2,400 feet of fencing to fence in a rectangular horse corral. Find a function that models the area of the corral in terms of the width of the corral, which is x. So first of all, let's remind ourselves that if you have a rectangle, the perimeter of a rectangle is two times the width plus two times the length. And we're saying that x is the width. And so if you do that, we know the perimeter has to be 2,400 because that's the maximum amount of fencing material that we have. And that's going to be two times the width, which is x, and then plus two times the length. And so if we subtract 2x from both sides, and then divide by 2, 1,200 divided by 2 is, excuse me, 2,400 divided by 2 is 1,200, and 2x divided by 2 is x, and this is equal to the length. So you're, in case you're wondering, you know, where this length of 1,200 minus x comes from, it comes from just simply plugging in what we know into the perimeter formula and then solving for the length. So now what we want to do in part A is we want to... Find a function that models the area of the corral in terms of the width x. So we're going to say a of x is equal to the area. 
And this area A of X, remember, it's just width times length to get the area of a rectangle. So it's X times 1200 minus X, which is the same as 1200X minus X squared. And if you write this in descending order, you get negative X squared plus 1200X. So notice that what we have here is the quadratic function A of X equals negative X squared plus 1200X. Now for part B, it says find the dimensions of the rectangle that maximize the area of the corral. Well, look at your area function. Your area function is a quadratic function. If you want to maximize a quadratic function, you have to find the vertex. So to find the vertex, we know that it's going to be x equals negative b divided by 2a, which in this case is negative 1200 divided by 2 times negative 1. And if you do the math on this, you get 600. So the vertex occurs when x equals 600 feet. So that's the width. And then the length, remember, is 1200 minus x. So that means the length will be 1200 minus 600, which will be 600 feet as well. And so to maximize the area of the rectangle, you need actually a square, which would be 600 feet by 600 feet. And that answers the question that they were asking. Remember, they asked for what are the dimensions of the rectangle that give you the maximum area. They didn't actually ask for the maximum area, right? They just said to find the dimensions. Now, of course, if you want to know what the area is, all you need to do is multiply these together. So the area of this rectangle would be 600 feet multiplied by 600 feet, which is equal to 360,000 square feet. Okay, but again, that's not what they asked for in this problem. They only asked for the dimensions.